أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الليل الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عليكم السلام ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أول بيت وضع للناس للذي ببكة مباركا وهدى للآلمين فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم من دخله كان آمنا most surely the first house appointed for men is the one at Bakka blessed and guidance for the nations in it are clear signs the standing place of Ibrahim and whoever enters it shall be secured and pilgrimage to the house is incumbent upon men for the sake of Allah upon everyone who is able to undertake the journey to it and whoever disbelieves then surely Allah is self-sufficient above any need of the worlds now Hajj is wajib once in lifetime and in religion performance of pilgrimage is obligatory on a person once only and that once performing once Hajj is called Hajjatul Islam so whenever you uh, will undertake uh, uh, any uh, rituals when you go to perform Hajj when you do any rituals you will when you mention your niyat example when you wear your ihram you will say that I'm wearing ihram of Umrah Mufrida for Hajjatul uh, uh, for of, of Umrah sorry I'm I'm performing I'm wearing ihram for Umrah Tamatto of Hajj Tamatto for Hajjatul Islam wajib qurbatanil Allah if you are going first time so Hajj, for those who are going first time, for them that Hajj, which is first time, it is called Hajjatul Islam. Umrah you have been, that is different. But if you go first time, this is called Hajjatul Islam. So when you reach Mikat, because look, we'll, we'll come to it. Alaikum salam. We'll come to it that look, there, uh, there are two main, Hajj consists of two things. It is Umrah Tamatto and Hajj Tamatto. Okay? So, when you perform Umrah Tamatto, you will go to Mikat. First, you'll go to Medina, inshallah. Okay? You will perform your ziyara, Rasulullah, Aimma, Baki, everything. After that, you will go to Mikat. Now, Mikat, there are 10 chosen places which are called Mikat, special places. Uh, now, from, if you go to Medina, example, perform ziyara, from Medina, you'll go to Masjid al Shajara. When you go to Masjid al-Shajara, there you will wear ihram. And uh, now wearing of ihram, it is not necessary to wear inside. Niyat is necessary. Niyat of wearing ihram is necessary. So even if you have worn ihram in the hotel, but the agreement between you and Allah should be in Mikat. Mikat is a, is a place chosen by Allah. Yeah, it is mentioned in Surah Waqiyah about Mikat. So, so if you go to Medina, we, you, you perform ziyarah, you have done your ziyarah after five, six days, whatever, you will go to Masjid al Shajara. There you will perform, in Masjid al Shajara, you will, uh, after wearing ihram, or you will, you will wear ihram there, whatever. You can wear from the hotel. Uh, when you come out, you have, done, you have prayed two rakat salat. When you come out, uh, your group leader or the alim who will, who will be in your group, he will do niyat and you will have to repeat. So like you will be just pretending that you are wearing ihram, but you have already worn, or you will wear there, then you will say that I am performing umrah tamatto for hajj tamatto, for hajjatul islam, wajib qurbatan ilallah. As simple as that. This should be remembered that hajj consists of two, two great things. And those two things are umrah tamatto and hajj tamatto. Now, Umrah Tamatto, there are five things in Umrah Tamatto. You will wear ihram, and then you will do talbiya. Talbiya is those four labbaik. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, labbaik, la sharika, laka labbaik. This is wajib. Then, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika, laka labbaik. That is mustahab. It is mustahab to recite this talbiya until you reach Khan Kaaba. When you have seen Khan Kaaba, it is mustahab to recite from Mikat up to Masjidul Haram. So, it is Ihram and Talbiya, it is counted as one. After that, 
When you see Hanekaba, you will do tawaf too. After doing tawaf, you will go to perform two rakat salat tawaf or namaz tawaf behind at the rear of Makam Ibrahim. Three, then you will do sa'i, that is the running from, from uh, Safa to Marwa, and Marat, Marwa to Safa seven times. After that, you will do taksir, just a, a bit of cutting of hair or, na of, or nails, whatever. That is called taksir. So these are five things. This, this is uh, umra e tamatto. And this you can do from first shawwal up to eighth of zilhij. After ninth zilhij, then you will start hajj e tamatto. Yeah? So you, you'll understand slowly, slowly. When, as we will we'll discuss, we'll go through, you'll come to know what I mean. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Only in Umrah, you have got Tawaf Nisa and Namaz Tawaf Nisa. In Umrah Mufrida. So now you should remember, I didn't want to say this because I thought I'll confuse you for those who are going first time. So it is an example. Just this, keep this in mind. You have got Umrah Mufrida, which you can go in Rajab or Shaban or Maha Ramadan. In, that is Sunnah. Umrah Mufrida. Yes. Yeah. It is recorded though. In, it will go in YouTube this. That's why I'm using the mic. But you can record. Bismillah. So, you have got Umrah Mufrida. Then you have got Umrah Tamatto. Then you have got Hajj Tamatto. Okay? Let us not touch Hajj Tamatto right now because I'll confuse you. Umrah Mufre, Umrah, uh, what I've, I've said right now, I've mentioned right now, Umrah Tamatto. Umrah Mufrida is exactly the same. Only the difference between Umrah Mufrida and Umrah Tamatto is that in Umrah Tamatto, you don't have Tawafun Nisa. Why? Because you will do Tawafun Nisa and Namaz Tawafun Nisa at last in Hajj Tamatto. But in Umrah Mufrada, we just do Sunnah, we go, then after finishing all the rituals, you'll have to add Tawafun Nisa and Namaz Tawafun Nisa. Now, it is clear from the Holy Quran and the traditions that performance of Hajj is obligatory on every person who has attained puberty and has the means. Hajj is one of the basic principles of Islam. Its performance is one of its essentials, and its non-performance is a grave sin. Denial of the obligatory nature of Hajj is kufr. It is just like you deny namaz, you deny uh, roza, example, fasting. It is kufr. A person who denies namaz, denies Quran, is kafir. So Hajj is also wajib. If you deny, you are kafir. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, the conditions of Hajj will go very fast because uh, we have been discussing this uh, in the past Basiles for those who are coming in daily prayers, in ad adult, adult interactive classes, and I don't want to waste much of your time. So uh, we'll be very quick. Uh, these are, we'll, we'll rather we'll spend time in discussing more important things. Okay, so conditions of Hajj are like, example, adulthood, uh, reason, akil. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, freedom and financial ability, uh, time. You need to have enough time for Hajj. You need to have physical health and strength, no obstruction, expenses of the journey, ability of means of return. At least, sometimes maybe there's, there's more important things 
you have, and you know, financially, you have to spend your money on that example. Somebody in your family is, is in need of to be operator, operation. So you need to spend there. So the, for that person, his, his hajj is exempted. He can, if, if you're one of your parents, example, he needs to be operated and he needs money. So for you, at that time, hajj is not wajib. Until those 10 conditions meet, then hajj becomes wajib. And those 10 conditions are these. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes, when a person, example, his state of mind is not good, yani what, yani maybe sometimes he's good, but sometimes he's, uh, he's not good. All of a sudden, he becomes sick, ill, whatever. So Agha says that you can send a proxy, a naib, who can perform hajj on your behalf. So again, if you want to send a naib, you, the, a naib uh, a representative, he needs to have these things. He needs, he needs to be adult, he needs to have state of mind, he needs to be a mu'min, he needs to be free as well, the agent's freedom. And second thing is, there are some, I, I will just write from your email addresses, I'll send you this file via email, so that you can read in your own good time. There are some etiquettes of Hajj, like there are some duas to be recited, it's noted over here, this uh, uh, prayers to be prayed, two rakat salah, with wudu before you uh, depart for you, this uh, journey of Hajj, spiritual journey. And then uh, Imam Sadiq salam says also that when you start to perform Hajj, when you start your, this spiritual journey, then be careful in terms of that don't be angry. Uh, the whole purpose of Hajj is that you are going there, you want to mold yourself, you want to train yourself so that you come back, you, have, you are already humble. You see? So in, in, uh, your journey needs to be fruitful. The way we say Mahi Ramadan needs to be fruitful uh, before Mahi Ramadan and after Ramadan, there should be some changes. Same applies to Hajj. Before you leave and then when you come back, there needs to be a difference. You, you, you don't need to be the same person then. You have changed spiritually. So Imam says that you, your anger needs to be controlled. You, uh, you, you, need to be, uh, you, you need to prevent yourself from sinning. Things like that. Now, uh, the first thing you will do is that you will go to Masjid al-Nabawi. You will go to Ziyarat in Medina. One of the most beautiful places in the world, on the face of the earth. That is Medina Munawwara, where there is the Haram of Rasulullah. This is the photograph of Masjid al-Nabawi. And then, when you come out from Masjid al-Nabawi, there is a Qabrastan which is called Jannatul Baqi. And they are, our four Immas are buried in Jannatul Baqi. The way Masjid al-Nabawi, we respect, same applies to Janatul Baki, needs to be respected. There are some ziyarats to be recited. 7,000 companions of the Prophet are buried there. Bibi Umbul Banin is buried here. And other, com and other prominent uh, close family members of Rasulullah are buried here. His sons, Rasulullah's sons are buried here. Bibi Fatima bin Asad is buried here. And according to other riwayah, Bibi Fatima Zahra alayhi salam is buried here in Janatul Baki. Because in some riwayah, it is said that Bibi Zahra alayhi salam is buried in Janatul Baki. In other riwayah, it is said that she is buried uh, in her house, and her house was in Masjid al Nabawi. And other riwayah say that she is buried between Mimbar and Rosa, the Ro Rosa Rasul. So the ulama say that recite the ziyarah of Bibi Fatima Zahra alayhi salam in all these three places, because it is not known where is she buried. So all these three places, when you go, perform her ziyarah. And then, there are some historical sites where you go there and you will see this, as uh, having said earlier, that I will forward you the email, uh, I will forward you the, this file, so you will have in your records everything in your phone, but most of these sites are destroyed, they're demolished by Wahhabis, by Salafis. Like um, these small, small masajids, the sub saba masjid, these are sub, in Arabic is seven, so there are seven masajids, Masjid of uh, Salman al-Farsi, Masjid Imam Ali alayhi salam, Masjid Abi Fatima Zahra alayhi salam, these all are destroyed. And we know why they are destroyed, why they have destroyed. They're destroyed because they've got grudge and hatred against Ahlul Bayt. So they don't want their zikr to be, you know, they don't want that Ahlul Bayt to be mentioned. So what they did, they destroyed the Masajid. They destroyed uh, Masjid Raddu Shams, number four. If you see that Masjid Raddu Shams, they destroyed that Masjid also. Because in that masjid, Imam Ali alayhi salam, when he made an action, uh, Radu Shams is the return of the sun. When the sun had already set, 
And Imam Ali alayhi salam had not prayed for some reasons. And then with his action, the sun returned. And then Imam Ali alayhi salam prayed his namaz. So that, that place, it is called Masjid al Shams. That also they have destroyed. Uh, the place where uh, Rasulullah, when he married Bibi Khadija al Kubra, and the house where they lived, that house is also destroyed. The house of Abu Ayyub Ansari, when the Holy Prophet of Islam, when he migrated from Makkah and he came to Medina, the first person to accommodate Rasulullah is Abu Ayyub Ansari. Yeah, his name is Abu Ayyub Ansari. So that house is there also. Um, and when Rasulullah came, you all know the history that when Rasulullah came, and all the Ansars, the people of Medina, they said that we will accommodate you, Ya Rasulullah. Rasul now Rasulullah could not pick and choose like that I'll go to that person, to a particular person. What Rasulullah did is that he said that wherever my camel sits, wherever it goes, I'll go to that house. The camel chose the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari. So Rasulullah put up at the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari. And the first mu'jiza which Rasulullah did was that the mother of Abu Ayyub Ansari was blind. And that was the first mojiz of Rasulullah that uh, he, the, uh, she, uh, she got her eyesight back. Her eyesight was restored in Medina Munawwara. So then you, uh, uh, from Medina Munawwara, when you go to Mecca, Mecca Mukarraba, the first thing is Kaaba. You'll perform the tawaf over there. Then there is Hijra Ismail, Hajarul Aswad, Maqam Ibrahim, Zamzam. Hills of Safa and Marwa, Masjid e Jinn, uh, Cave of Thor, Cave of Hira, Arafa, Jabal ur Rahma, Muzdalifa, or Mash'arul Mash Haram, Mina, Masjid e Khif in Mina. And then you've got the last thing, Jannatul Mu'alla. The way we have Jannatul Baki in Medina, you have Jannatul Mu'alla in Mecca. And when uh, the Wahhabis in 1925, when they destroyed and demolished Jannatul, uh, Jannatul Baki, they also destroyed Jannatul Mu'alla. It is a symmetry, and it looks like this. And uh, in this symmetry, maybe Khadija Tul Kubra is buried there. Uh, the immediate relatives, immediate relatives of Rasulullah are buried here. The uncle of the Prophet Abu Talib, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, uh, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, Hazrat Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib, and Bibi Amina bin Tawahab, the mother of Rasulullah, is buried there. Now, this is the sketch of Khan e Kaaba. Um, when you do tawaf, you are supposed to do tawaf uh, between Khan e Kaaba and Maqam Ibrahim. But you are, not, you are not supposed to go inside. You can't take shortcut. Inside, you, you can't get, uh, take shortcut. Like, you can't do here. You have to go like this. Yeah, outside. Because this is Hijra Ismail. Okay, you, you can't pass through Hijri Ismail, you have to be outside. Yeah, and this is Maqam Ibrahim. And just in case, if it is a lot of rush, so it is makru according to Agassistani, if you're thrown outside, you can still perform tawaf. Because if it's uh, crowded, a lot of people, if you're thrown outside, it is makru. And then when you've finished your tawaf, you will come behind Maqam Ibrahim and you'll perform your two rakat salah, namaz -e tawaf. But again, the, you'll find the closest place to Maqam Ibrahim. And if you don't get the closest place of Maqam Ibrahim, the, the most closest place, this is for wajib tawaf. But for sunnah tawaf, you can pray your two rakat salah anywhere in Masjidul Haram. We'll discuss more about tawaf when we come towards tawaf. Because we'll discuss each and everything. I'm going very fast because I want to cover everything. This takes two hours and we don't have a lot of time. So... I'll try to discuss everything and finish up everything today. Even though I will uh, email you, I'll forward you this file so that you can go through this on your own when you are at home, in your good time, in your own time. Now, this pilgrimage consists of two parts. The first is called Umrah Tamatto, and the second is Hajj Tamatto. That's it. It is obligatory to perform the Umrah before the Hajj. Umrah Tamatto performed any time between 1st Shawwal and 8th Zilhij. Umrah Tamatto has five things. Ihram and Talbiyah, Tawaf, namaz -e tawaf Sa'i and Taqseer. So when you have won Ihram, 25 things become Haram. 25 things become Haram after Talbiyah. 
When you have done, when you have worn ihram, you have done niyat of umrah tamatto, for hajj tamatto, of hajjatul islam, wajib kurbata lillallah, still those 25 things, you, you don't have to avoid those 25 things. But once you have said talbiyah, that's it. You have locked your ihram. So those 25 things become haram. Those 25 things, you will be free and you can perform those 25 things when you do taqseer. So to lock your ihram is with talbiyah and to unlock your ihram is taqseer. Taqseer is cutting your hair or your nails. Okay. Three obligations for ihram. One, wearing ihram garment. Two, niya. Three, talbiyah. Talbiyah is labbaik. Allahumma labbaik, labbaik, la sharika laka labbaik, inda alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika laka labbaik. Only two pieces of ihram, two pieces of clothes. And it looks like this. Okay. I'll just read quickly. Uh, once ihram is worn, although this, this is wrong, it's written once ihram is worn, after talbiyah, ihram is worn, then you'll, you'll, you'll do niyat, then you'll do talbiyah, isn't it? After talbiya, 25 things become haram. Hunting, sexual union, kissing a woman, touching a woman, looking at a woman and flirting with her, masturbating, reciting nikah, wearing perfume, wearing stitched clothes by men, wearing surma, looking in the mirror, wearing shoes, slippers or socks, outrage, fusuk, this covers lying, swearing and unlawful boasting, quarreling, Healing insects found on humans, such as lice, beautifying oneself, applying oil, removing hair from the body, covering the head for males, or dipping one's body in water, even for females, covering of the face by females. So covering of the face by females, there it won't work. It's not allowed. Sheltering in the shaded place for males. Bleeding one's body, cutting nails, extracting tooth, according to some scholars, and carrying arms. These 25 things become haram. Ji. Now, uh, I don't think so. See, uh, I want an example. Up. When you pass through a gutter, you are not allowed also to uh, block your nose. Example, you know, like the, you don't want that bad smell. Like l l Islam says, let that bad smell go in. You understand what I mean? So, after all, again, this will be considered as we had uh, applying oil, example. It will be considered in all these things. It will, it will come in one way or the other. Like, it, it, because you are, you are, you're not allowed to apply oil. Uh, you're not allowed to do anything there. Like, again, it's, it's, it's like a dead person. You are going to your, your Lord. You're not allowed to, you, you, even the insect, when it bites you, let it bite you. You can't hit it. You can't kill it. So again, these 25 things, because all if Sharia would have mentioned, there would have been 1,000 things. So 25 things is like, a bottom line, that these things are not allowed. Now, after that you'll do tawaf. Tawaf is invalid if there's no intention. This all know. No one will perform tawaf without intention. Okay? And then, uh, tahara should be there. No one will perform uh, tawaf without tahara. Okay? Uh, wudu should be there. And other things. These all... It's just for the sake of Sharia it has come, but otherwise, okay. After that, uh, uh, Tawaf should start from Hajarul Aswad, the black stone. Okay, so that is the starting point. And as a matter of recommended precaution, the entire body of the pilgrim must pass in front of the entire stone. It is recommended to stop a little distance away from the stone, so that one is certain to be standing opposite it. The extra distance should provide an assurance for a proper start. Two, each round is completed at the Hajarul Aswad in the last round. And the last round again should be Hajarul Aswad. It is recommended to proceed a little further. So before starting, you need to start a bit earlier. And when you finish, at the end, the seventh round, you, you a bit further. 
okay, to provide assurance. At all three, at all times during the tawaf, the holy kawa must be to the left of the pilgrim. In order to kiss a corner of the holy kawa, one faces it, or because of rush of pilgrims, one finds himself facing it or giving it his back or right size, the distance covered in such a pose will not count as part of tawaf. Yani it should be your left side. Now sometimes you might be pushed with the crowd. This won't work. It won't be counted as tawaf. That's what Sharia says. You have to go back, but it's impossible. Uh, they say that you go like this, the distance, which, <laughs> you know, I know it sounds funny. You go like this, you go reverse. But this is impossible. Ah, son, you'd rather do the whole thing again. Um, Hijri Ismail, this I mentioned earlier, that Hijri Ismail must be included in Tawaf. That is to say, a pilgrim must turn, turn around the Hijr without entering it or climbing its wall. So, the Hijr Ismail, you will see, Hijr Ismail should be included. But you will know, all will be performing tawaf and no one will be entering inside. All those who will perform, they will include Hijr Ismail. Five. One must circumambulate, keeping clear of the Holy Kaaba and its projection it's known as Shadarwan. You must have noticed in that sketch, there was a place called Shadarwan. Shadarwan should be kept clear. One must circumambulate seven times continuously. Alaikum salam. Less than seven rounds will invalidate the tawaf. If more than seven rounds are made deliberately, the tawaf will be invalid too. The seven rounds must follow each other without considerable interruption between them. The tawaf must be performed by free movement of the pilgrim. If he was made to move by being pushed by the crowd, tawaf will not be acceptable. Many a times you are pushed, uh, even in the uh, haram of Imam Hussain al -Islam, when you go for ziyara, there's so many people, you know, I've experienced personally. Like when you go to haram, you know, you're pushed, but that is ziyarat. Fiqh masail is not applicable there, but here is fiqh masail. If you are, you're not going with your own, it's not free movement, you're just being carried by the crowd, this won't work. That round will won't be counted as tawaf. Okay, once you finish tawaf, you'll go to do namaz at tawaf. The third obligation in Umrah Tamatto consists of two rakats to be said after tawaf. It is performed like subh prayer, except that the worshipper has the option to say it aloud or in a whispered way. It is obligatory to say it close to Makam Ibrahim. If a person deliberately fails to say tawaf prayer, his hajj is invalid. The prayer must be said immediately after tawaf. That is to say, there must not, generally speaking, a gap, be a gap between tawaf and the prayer. Tawaf patai wa khali. You finish tawaf and go to pray two rakat salah. It's like subu namaz. If your wazoo is broken before uh, four rounds, you'll have to do tawaf all over again. But if it is broken after four rounds or the fourth round, yeah, you finish your four round, you'll have to go do wudu and continue from there. Hmm. Hmm. First of all, you need to be very careful. Pella to, you need to be very careful. Uh, you know, I, 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 like, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, it's like a caution that when you go there, because these are wajib things. So, first of all, we keep our mind very clear, yeah, that. Uh, Okay, that I, I need to do seven rounds. Yes, yeah, seven is compulsory. Yeah, but, but don't keep, don't form a habit. Because I, I, you must have seen in the, one must succumb seven times continuously. 
less than seven rounds when invalid tatawaf, if more than seven rounds are made deliberately, tawaf will be invalid too. So, vakyan to shak mahol, you know, milkul, deliberately it will invalidate. Now, again, if it is shak, yeah, that is different. But deliberately, because look, when Allah has kept a number, that is seven. Like namaz e maghrib, three rakats. Allah wants three from you. You can't pray more than three. It is haram. It is the same applies. The way there's ruling of namaz, here also deliberate. If there's shak, there's different thing. You know, there's different thing. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Yeah, it's very good. If a person keeps a track of himself, that you know who Amna Hajar Aswad and Avi Gyoshu, this is one. Like Tasbih, yeah, yeah. But the best thing, more than Tasbih, I think so, is your own hand. This is another good idea. In the hole, so you'll know. Okay. From after that, you'll go to you'll do sa'i, and sa'i sa'i means uh, in Arabic means hard work, struggling. Sa'i, isn't it? Sa'yuhum mashkura. So it's running. That hard work. You you'll remind yourself. The running of Hajr alayhi salam, the mother who wanted water for her son. Yeah? So that act was liked by Allah, that Allah has made wajib for the pilgrims. When they go, they have to do sa'i. Now, niyyah to attain closeness to Allah. Sa'i consists of seven laps. The first round starts at Safa and ends at Marwa. You see, there are two uh, mountains, big mountains, and the distance is quite long also. It's not a short distance. I don't think you have to No. The distance, you, you, it will come here. They'll discuss here. Okay? Now, um, the second round is reversal of the first. The third is reversal. And you start from Safa, you'll end at Marwa. Isn't it? The seventh round. One should cover the whole distance between two mounds in each round. There is no need to climb any of them. Even though it is preferable and precautionary to do so. As a matter of precaution, it is obligatory to, for performing sa'i to be continuous. That is, there should not be a break between the rounds. This is not like tawaf. You can rest if it is only for two, three seconds. But if you want to go to the washroom, example, which might take you half an hour, you will go, you will leave your fourth round, fifth round, Pacho also, you'll have to do again from the scratch. It's not like the wafki, you'll continue from there. But if an elderly person or an aged person, if a person gets tired, it's a human, he's a human. So if he'll rest, okay, for, for a while when he rests, there is, there's no problem. That's fine. But if it's a very long gap, then you'll start all over again. Chale, ha ha. Upon rest karwanu thori kwar waste. Bow gap hoe to pachi fari thi pacha karu kapse. A pilgrim must, as a matter of precaution, observe the order of rounds. Anya you have to observe the order of rounds. In Sai. However, in the course of performing Sai, it is permissible to sit at Safa or Marwa or between them for rest. But not for a very long period of time. It is now the taksir is the fifth obligation. After that, Saat Muraun put you on the Marwa. Yeah? At that time only, taksir you are allowed even to do in your hotel. We are allowed to do anywhere else. Last, nothing. Maru amaj karo. 
but it's better to do there. Let me bully just. And if it's forgotten, there shouldn't be a very long gap. If it's forgotten, then again it will be a problem. So Taratash Karilevan. It doesn't take long. Um <coughs> Taksir must follow Sai. Taksir is not obligatory immediately after Sai. It is permissible to do Taksir wherever one pleases. Whether at Sai place, at one's house, or at any other venue. If a pilgrim deliberately fails to do taqseer and subsequently wears a haram for hajj, his umrah is invalidated. So we are done here. We have finished umrah tamatto. We have finished ziyarat of Medina. We have finished umrah tamatto. Isn't it? Now what will happen? Umrah tamatto ma panch was tupati kya. Now what will you do? Kai tarikh hai we? Which date has come? Arafa. Which is which date? Ninth, ninth of Zilhij. Yeah? So because from first Shawwal up to eighth Zilhij, you can you are it's open, you can do this. You can perform these rituals, which is called Umrah Tamatto. You are done with Taksir, the last thing is Taksir. Now you'll have to do you'll wait for till ninth Zilhij. In the afternoon, you'll go to Arafah. Again you will wear ihram, and then you'll go to Maidan Arafah, and now you'll start Hajj Tamatto. That was Umrah Tamatto. This was Umrah Tamatto. Now you'll do Hajj Tamatto. Yeah? Now, Kaham Anya Chalu Thaiche. Aham Motu Kaham Che. Akali, Tame Joa Jaso, to it's Chardi was Che. But a Chardi was Mabo Motu Kaham Che. Okay? Uh, Hajj Tamatto has 13 things. Like Umrah Tamatto, Hajj Tamatto also has. Ihram and Talbiya. And this you can do it in Makkah, even in your hotel. It's mustahab, highly recommended to do in uh, Masjidul Haram. But even if you do it in, 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 your, in your hotel, there's no problem. Briefly, I'll just mention this, then we'll go into this in depth. Yeah? Ihram and Talbiya in Makkah. Staying in Arafah. From noon to ninth, uh, yani staying in Arafah from noon on the ninth of Zilhij till sunset. So, Baporna, that is afternoon, you will have to go to Maidan Arafah. Yeah? From noon, Zohor, up to Maghrib, you just stay there. Allah doesn't want anything from you, He just wants your presence there. You just stay there. There are many duas to be recited. Dua Arafah, which is a very long dua. Even if you are unconscious there, you are sleeping there, there's no problem. But you should be there. Because you'll see everybody wearing white clothes, white ihram. It will, rem it will remind you at Maidan uh, al the Day of Judgment. Allah wants to remind you the hereafter. <coughs> Where you, uh, Allah wants to remind you death. That is why it is called Arafah. Arafah comes from Ma'arifah. Ma'arifa is state of understanding. What Allah wants is your state of understanding. You understand Him. You understand the concept of Islam. You be there. That's it. Lazinoti moti moti dua You know. You be there and mold yourself. Bilkul. Bilkul. The sins are forgiven when you when you, you when you come back from a Hajj, uh, you have uh, you have shaved your head, all your hair has gone. This means the sins have gone also; they are wiped off. It is like a newborn who is born. Yes, it doesn't mean now. You see those responsibilities which were there, even Hakunnas. If God forbid, I spoke of a moment. Okay, I had, yeah, that is, that is understandable. Even Kazanamas, yes. Roja, fasting. Okay, so now then you have got uh, Muzdalifa or Mash'arul Haram. It is called also Mash'arul Haram. And if from there you'll go to Mash'arul Haram, you'll spend a night there. So in Maghrib, when you've come out from Arafah, You'll go to Mash'arul Haram. Yeah? You'll spend the night there. And the most important part to be in Mash'arul Haram, we'll discuss that also in depth. 
Okay, from uh, Fajr up to sunrise. We have to be there. We men, young children, weak, uh, weak people, aged, old, I don't know, whatever, they are exempted. They can just spend part of the night. But men who don't have any genuine reason, they have to be there uh, from uh, what you call, uh, from Fajr up to sunrise. They have to be there. After that, you'll go to Mina. From Mash'arul Haram, you'll go to Mina. When you go to Mina, there, Ramye Jamara, you'll start pelting the stones. The early thing, that is the tenth night, the tenth day, sorry. G. You'll pelt stones to uh, Ramye Jamara, we call to Saturn. After that, when you come out from there, you'll go to slaughter an animal, which is called Kurbani. After that, you'll go to shave your head. Women don't have shaving of head, they'll just do taksir. But men will shave their head. After that, you'll return to Makkah to perform tawaf. After that, you'll do namaz tawaf in Makam Ibrahim. Followed by Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Then you'll do tawaf on Nisa and then namaz tawaf on Nisa. Then followed by remaining in Mina during the eve of 11th and 12th in Mina. In the eve of 11th and the eve of 12th of Zilhij, you'll be in Mina. Next day, yeah, the 11th day and 12th day, again, you will go to pell stones to these three shaitan, three satans, okay? Seven each, seven stones each, 11th day and 12th day. The previous night, you'll have stayed in Mina. You must, you must spend night there. The next day, you'll have to pell stones. But now, 12th day, you have to leave by the time of Zohar. If you spent a Maghrib there on the 12th, the 13th night, 12th day, 13th night, then you'll have to sleep 13th night also in Mina. And then the 13th day, you'll have to pell stones. And at the 12th day, once you've already uh, thrown your stones, leave. Go to Makabago. If you stay there, you'll have to sleep there, and the next day again, you'll have to. This is Wajib. Clear? Pachita me chuita, ha? No, nothing. But, but, you. Can we namaze tawa funisa? Hmm. Bilkul. Okay. Um, Ehram and Talbiya. It has already been stated that for Hajj Tamatto, it is obligated to wear Ehram in Makkah. If a pilgrim deliberately wears it elsewhere, his Ehram is invalid. If he enters Makkah having worn it, indeed it is obligatory on him, if possible, to wear it again in Makkah. Otherwise, his hers is invalid. No one would do that. The best place is the Holy Mosque, Masjidul Haram. Okay, to, and it is recommended to wear the Haram after performing two rakat of prayer at Makam Ibrahim or Hijra Ismail. This is all Mustahab. If during Hajj Tamatto a pilgrim forgets to wear Haram for Hajj, in Makkah it is obligatory for him, if possible, to return to Makkah. So ihram should be worn in Makkah, in any case. The best time for ihram, wearing of ihram, is the day of Tarwiyah, which is the 8th of Zilhij. Once you've worn ihram, you'll go to Arafah. Now, Arafah looks like this, Maidan Arafah. The objective of performing this act of worship has to be the Niyyah. What is important is wukuf. Wukuf means stopping. Wukuf in Arabic, wukuf is to stop. Yani, teru, ya, rukwanu. To put up there, to stay there, to stay there. Yeah? If a pilgrim had set out with such an intention right from the start of time and fell asleep or became unconscious throughout the remaining period, it suffices, provided his presence is there. Wukuf at Arafah should, as a matter of precaution, be from the beginning of Zawal. Zawal is noon, Zohar, Bapur. On the 9th of Zilhij till sunset, the Maghrib Sudiwa Hoa Jobas. You should be there. 
apparently a delay caused by performing ghusl or praying zohar and asr jointly is permissible thora mora thi to vandor thi if you are late it's okay because there'll be a lot of traffic you'll be praying example so you might reach late there's no problem the wukuf there for this period is obligatory and whoever fails to do so by choice commits a sin there are many supplications to read on the day of arafah and the first of this recommended supplication is known as dua arafah it is the dua of imam hussein alayhi salam when he recited in the plains of arafah before he went to karbala from there you'll have spent uh, the uh, part of the day from zohor up to maghrib now you'll pray your maghrib namaz there also maidan e arafah ma pachi tame rat na ave nikalso you'll go to muzdalifa muzdalifa is also called mash'arul haram when you go there you'll have to spend a the night there na ele you you rat guzar vi parse wa barabar se na muzdalifa ma Now it will be very crowded. I can recall in 2006 when we went, we walked from Arafa to Masharul Haram. We opted to walk because ethnic traffic had to. That you know, you go the the coach would go and you, they, they would wait. So much crowded. With our things, we walked from Maidan Arafa to Musdalifa. I can't recall now because it's quite long now. Six seven years ago, chi. Ii mane khabar nahi. Okay, when a pilgrim leaves Arafa, he must spend part of the night in Musdalifa. He should, as a matter of precaution, stay till sunrise. That said, apparently he can depart from there for Wadi Muhassar before sunrise. However. He is not permitted to cross the wadi and enter Mina before sunrise. So you're not allowed to leave before sunrise and go to Mina because you'll have the next item is going to Mina. But you can't leave before sunrise. If a person does not hold wukuf between dawn and sunrise at all, his Hajj is invalid. Women, children, the fearful, the weak, the aged, the sick and those caring for them are exempted. it is permissible for them to spend the night at least night eid eve that is 10th night kat muzdalifa kim ko arafa nu jo hato in ninth divas hato yaad che to only tame have anya 10th night che this is the 10th night eid night the wukuf at muzdalifa must be with the intention of at qurbatan ila allah okay now you are this is 10th divas now you will come to 10th day Tenth day, that is Eid day, Mina. So first you have Arafah, then you have uh, Musdalifah or Masharul Haram. Now you'll come to Mina. When you'll come to Mina, the first thing you'll do is stoning Jamara Akaba. This is the fourth obligation in Hajj, on the day of the sacrifice. Certain conditions have to be observed. The niya, it should be Qurbatan ila Allah. So niya, bolu wajib she? No, it will confirm. You have niyat is intention irado is enough but it's good to say because you confirm what you are doing we are humans we forget so it's good to to confirm to speak seven stones must be thrown not more or less it is not permitted to throw anything other than stones the stones must be thrown one after the other and not two or more at a time and ek by ek it is necessary that the stones hit the jamara The stones must reach the jamara by being aimed at it and not merely deposit deposited there. The throwing of the stones and hitting the jamara must be done by a pilgrim himself. So, if the stone was in hand but he was jostled around resulting in the stone reaching the jamara the obligation is not fulfilled. Are pota ne karu jo se marwano patthar ne ભીડ ની તો વાંધો નથી ભીડ હોય તો મારું જ ખપશે બીમાર હસો તો આવશે નું મસલો પણ ભીડ ની તમે ધીસ ઇઝ અનએક્સેપ્ટેબલ કે બહુ રસ છે તો હું એક્ઝામ્પલ મારા દીકરાને કે મારા નેફ્યુને આપું ના 
If a person is sick, he can hire a proxy KHA, you know. Jeno hata jina upre bimari that is different. Lachari ne KHA helpless. Okay, the same rule rule applies if the jamara is obstructed by a man, a woman, or an animal whose movements result in the stone hitting the jamara. However, there is no objection to its hitting something before reaching the jamara. If it touched you, pachig you, there is no problem. The stone must be thrown by hand. In that, if a pilgrim throws by his mouth or feet, it is not sufficient. As a matter of precaution, it is not permissible to use a tool to fling a stone into the jamara. The throwing of stones must be carried out between sunrise and sunset. So, pellu kam, divas ma, tenth divas, you throw the stones. It should be done in the daytime. Now, this looks like this. Two things are to be taken into consideration regarding the stones. They must have been picked within the boundaries of the haram. So it is allowed. You can pick outside your hotel and keep it ready. The stones. There's no problem. Before you went to Arafa exam. Before you went to... In Musdalifa, it is mustahab to pick the stones from Mash'arul Haram. But you can't take the stones from Haram itself. Or from Masjid Akhif. So, they must have been picked within the boundaries of the Haram but not from the holy mosque or masjid al-khif. And better still, that they be picked in Musdalifa. As a matter of precaution, they must not have been used for this purpose before. It is recommended, mustahab, that they be colored. Now, this won't work. Okay? It is recommended, mustahab, that they be colored, dotted, and soft. It is recommended and of a thickness of a finger. When, when, when stoning, should be standing in one's feet instead of tahara. As a matter of precaution, the stones must be hitting the area of the jamra representing its original height. It is not sufficient to hit the extension and elevation recently made. So you don't go up. This I forgot to mention. Don't do up. All the maraje of a Shia maraje, they are refusing. So even this, do not go up reset the uh, by, by no chair. You have to do level. Uh, and the so it's the upper story of the Jamara recently constructed. It's not allowed there. But at tenth divas chair. When you finish this, then you will go for Kurbani. Isn't it? When you're done, this is the 10th day. Ramiya Jamara Akaba. You'll go to Kurbani. Atkal bo easy thing you say. In Kurbani, you just give the name. Mandela Geshe. Yeah? But you look at Karina Ke, Tamne Kie. Tamaru Nam Lakse. A Gao, even my time, I remember 2006, Tipan. Havna to Bilkule Majase. When I can recall our elders saying, my father was saying, when he went in 89. He said that he himself is not a... You see, now it has changed. So now, you'll just, uh, group leaders just say, he'll just take your name. Fala, 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 okay. They'll, uh, they'll slaughter there in your niyabat, in your name, and they'll inform you. The only, I've already slaughtered for you. Your kurban is done. This is the fifth obligation in Hajj Tamatto. It is necessary to set one's mind on performing this act of worship in the hope of attaining closeness to Allah, uh, niya or al qurba. The sacrifice must be offered during the day unless one is afraid of doing so. So, again, it should be on the 10th day. The secret of the qurbani is that one forgets everything and sacrifices in the way of beloved. This all you'll hear on Thursday in Majlis when we bid farewell to the Hujjaj. This is all Majdi stuff. Sorry. No. Okay, so Kurban is done. 
after qurbani halaq taqsir for women cutting a bit then or halaq halaq is shaving of the head this is the sixth obligation uh, in the obligatory hajj it is necessary that the niyyah for carrying it one should be to attain nearness of allah you must have noticed that in each and every item it is said that it should be qurbatan ilallah shaving of the head is not permissible for ladies taqsir is their obligation men have the option of either shaving the head or taqsir however shaving the head is preferred so those who go first time shaving of the head is preferred after shaving or taqsir all that which had been forbidden to the pilgrim during ihram becomes permissible except intimacy to the wife this will be uh, allowed after tawaf nisa use of perfume and as a matter of precaution hunting otherwise after shaving of the head all badu all those it you are free the responsibilities go away only three things remain still apparently intimacy to ladies is not confined to intercourse rather it is it applies to all types of enjoyment which are forbidden during ihram however it could be said that the pilgrim can attend marriage solemnization and be a witness at it okay if the pilgrim forgets to perform either taqsir or shaving or fails to do so out of ignorance of the rule and then leaves mina he should return to it and perform either of them however if it becomes difficult to return he should do so whatever he is he should do so wherever he is sorry where where possible he should send the cut hair to mina if the pilgrim shaves his head somewhere other than mina even deliberately it is sufficient yet where possible he should send the cut hair to mina so this is very important that you shave your hair in mina then after that you have got you once you have shaved your hair in mina you will go to makka and you will perform tawaf and namaz tawaf seven rounds of tawaf in the usual manner the way we explained you tawaf this is done in the same way as tawaf for umrah tamatto was done completely the same you will do tawaf and then uh, you will do namaz tawaf this is maqam ibrahim pray two rakat salat after tawaf behind maqam ibrahim it is wajib to pray two rakat salat tawaf behind maqam ibrahim facing the kaaba when praying make sure the kaaba and maqam ibrahim is in front of you and you can see both when you look towards the kaaba the two rakat prayer is like the fajr prayer except for the niyat which is as follows i pray two rakat salat of tawaf hajj for hajj tamatto for hajjatul islam wajib qurbatan ila allah question am i allowed not to go to makkah i have done my qurbani you remember the previous uh, 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 after halaq there was qurbani then there was shaving of the hair the shaving of the head in mina isn't it this is 10th day then we say that you have to go to makkah to do tawaf and namaz tawaf what if i decide not to go to makkah i stay in mina because i have to be in mina anyway on the 11th night and 12th night for maghrib uh, for, for for eve of 11th night and 12th night and the following days i have to pelt stones to shaitan the 11th day and 12th day so i will perform my tawaf and namaz tawaf afterwards after 12th example 12th of zilhij am i allowed then not to follow the sequence is my question clear no samajh pe rahi samajh pe rahi hai na jo this 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 is the sequence we are following yeah so you have you are in mina you were in arafa then you went to muzdalifa then on the 10th day you came to mina when you came to mina you what you, what you did you did ramiya jamara you pelt the stones only to one shaitan then you went to do kurban